Hello, afternoon. Afternoon, two o'clock again. Um, so I'm back with uh, watercolour painting this week. Um, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all keeping away the cabin fever and the boredom, hopefully. Um, we are going to be painting some birds today. So that's what today is going to all be about. Um, just waiting for some of you to join me. Hello, there's a couple of people. Um, yeah, so we're going to be painting birds today, or a bird in particular. Um, so that's what we're doing today. So I've just got it up on here so I can see all of your lovely comments as well. Um, because that's what's really nice about this is that it's interactive and actually you can all see each other's um, paintings and drawings and creations um, at the end of it as well when everyone pops something on. Um, hi dad, hi Vu, hi Cheryl. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's really nice that it's it's kind of a community thing. Um, hi Vicky, so thank you, thank you very much for commenting. Um, so I'm gonna put you up here um, so that I can, I can be a bit more hands-free and so that you can actually see what I'm up to. There we go. Hopefully you keep it straight there. Um, so, yeah, so as I say, we're going to use watercolours to do birds today. Um, hello, hello Edith, hello Rosie. Hello, <laughs> and yes, hello to Stitch as well. Um, Stitch is reading uh, Tales of Beedle the Bard. He's still on his Harry Potter binge, I think, today. Um, which is good. Um, yeah, so birds-wise, we're going to be doing a technique which is dropping pigment onto wet. Um, I see all the comments, there we go. Lily loves your earrings, thank you Lily, my shell earrings, thank you very much. Um, and Lynn's joined us from my lunch break, excellent. Um, yeah, so when you use watercolours, your watercolour pigment, your watercolour paint, will only spread and will only um, go as far as the water. That you use so hopefully you've all got um watercolor paper watercolor paints and some brushes now the brushes i'm using today are these two here so i've got a nice thin one um and a fairly big one as well because we're going to be using the water to blend the colors rather than blending them ourselves like we did yesterday um hello imogen as es esme and henry hello 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 and so i'm gonna pop you down here so that you can see a little I'm going to go further down so you won't see my beautiful face today but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm painting um, a little bit better so I'm going to do uh, an experiment for this one so I just want you to paint a circle of water so you won't be able to necessarily see where this water is on my on my paper. So just a little circle of water, just in the corner. This is just a bit of an experiment. So if you just put the water down and then, and it can be any color you like, I just want you to use a little, little bit of the pigment on the tip of your brush. And where you've put the water, you're gonna drop that color in. So can you see how that color is spreading? Okay, and it will only spread as far as the edge of where you've put the water. It won't spread any further than that. So have a go, have a go at just putting some pigment into water. So paint the water first. It could be any shape, I've just used a circle. And then drop the pigment into the water and you'll see that it just starts spreading. Now, if you add another color into that, so I'm gonna start with a, I might add some blue actually, which might be the colors that I do for my bird actually. If you start adding some other colors into that, you'll see that they start spreading into, so the blue starts spreading into the green as well, and they start blending by themselves, so you're using the water to blend it. All right, so give it a go. Give it a go. How's everyone doing? How did everyone get on with that? It's quite a nice experiment to use. It's a really, really nice technique. I love using this technique. Okay. So with our bird, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. So you're gonna make a, a nice um, 
egg shape. So we're gonna put the point of the egg, if you like, up here, and we're gonna come down and round and come back up to the point. So that point is gonna be where the feathers are for the bird's tail. So if you just use water for now, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of water, it doesn't have to be sopping wet, and we're just gonna use that kind of egg shape here. So just enough to kind of wet and dampen, dampen the page. If you tilt your head to one side, you can actually see, if you've got a natural light source, the light shining on it, so it can show you where you've painted that water. It's just a nice little tip and trick there. Um, so I'm gonna use, I actually I'm gonna use a slightly different green um, for my bed. So I'm gonna bring this green all the way to around to the edge I want it to go to the edge of where I've painted my water. So pick your two colours. It doesn't have to be the colours I use. It doesn't have to be um, realistic at all. A black or a blue might be nice. Um, and I'm just going to bring this colour around to here. There we go. Can you see it kind of blending into the middle there? I'm just going to add some more pigment just to bring that in. You see it nicely blending. I just love that kind of feather effect as it disperses. You've all gone very quiet, which I'm assuming means you're all concentrating. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it up to the edge here. Now at this end, where the, where the tail feathers are, I'm going to try and make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to add in more pigment than perhaps I usually would. Um, just to give it a little bit of contrast to the other bit at the end there. And I'm just going to bring that round to there. Okay, and then kind of let the water do its work. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. And this time I'm going to go for my second colour. So this is my blue that I'm going to be using, um, which I might do the tail feathers in as well. Which again, I'm just going to get quite a lot of pigment on my brush. And I'm just going to bring it in. Just maybe up here into the green might be quite nice. Now, if any of you have got a piece of tissue handy or a piece of kitchen towel, um, you might want to grab that as well because that can be really useful for this next little bit of technique that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off slightly so it's still got some pigment in and I'm just gonna do a kind of wash of color in the middle just so it nicely blends. I might bring some more green into there actually. And then what I'm gonna do is use the tissue to actually take out some of that color in the middle. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. So again, that's another really nice effect if you don't want a huge amount of um, of colour but you just want some of it and you don't want those really harsh lines you can just use some tissue paper to soak that pigment up and that water and then you can add water again on top again so you just don't get those really harsh lines add a little bit of water into the middle there okay so I'm going to do the tail feathers next which is where my really nice thin brush comes in um, how are you all doing? How's everyone doing? No, nobody's commenting, so I'm assuming you're all concentrating at the moment. Um, so let me know. Afternoon, Jane. How are you doing? Um, so I'm going to go to my, my nice dark blue. Here. And what I'm going to do is just flick away some nice little tails. So as you can see, I've used quite a lot of pigment. I might actually use it a little bit better. And I'm just going to get some nice flicky tails. These remind me of the birds in um, the Roll Doll books. Is it the Roly Poly bird? The birds from the Twits. It kind of reminds me of that. Um, you're doing all right? Lisa's doing all right. <laughs> Excellent. And the kids. There we go. So you can flick as many kind of tails as you like. You can make your tail massive if you want to. Um, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to kind of keep it fairly tight there. 
um, but quite a lot of nice flicks would be nice. And you could alternate that with like a, maybe a different blue or mix it with a slightly different color. You can bring some different colors into there as well. Um, or let it dry and then you could put some darker pigments over the top if you wanted to. Okay. Severin, we're late, but we're still we're here now. Don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. You can always watch these. I always save these to my Facebook page afterwards, so you can always catch up and watch them again um, if you wanted to do a uh, repeat one or you missed a bit. Don't worry, you can always go back. Um, so hopefully that's kind of dried nicely a little bit now. I think we've got a little bit of water down there. Um, so next we're gonna add our beak. So to contrast with the colours that you've got for the bird, um, I'm going to use a nice bright yellow, really nice bright yellow to do. So you get quite a lot of pigment on there so it's nice and bold. Now, our beak. So our beak goes one line out, so this is why I'm using the nice thin brush. And I'm going to make it quite pointy. And then another one up, so can you see I've left that gap in the middle there. And then this bottom bit of the beak, I'm going to make a little bit thicker here and colour that in. So that's our lovely beak coming down there. I can just join that up there. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same for the legs. Because this little bit down here is slightly wet still, it will... Um, blend slightly into the other colour but actually that brings a really nice effect so I'll show you that one. So again I'm going to get quite a lot of uh, pigment on. You can see that's already going. Again I'm using that nice thin brush. So you bring it down and birds, well this bird has three claws at the front and one at the back and then I'm going to just join them up slightly. We've got a little bit of a leg coming up there. There we go. A little bit thicker. So can you see where that colour is kind of blended there? You can just about see that, I think. Like our colours up here when we were doing that experiment bit, you can see that they've really kind of blended and feathered out. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse that one off. Now, how's everyone doing? Can you show us the beak, please? Yes, I'll try and hold that up slightly. Can you see the beak? So you've got a nice thin line at the top, and then leave a gap, and you've got another line, and then you make the bottom line thicker. Hopefully that makes more sense now. Okay, so you kind of left that line. Now I'm gonna make this green just a little bit more vivid and a little bit darker, because I'm just not quite happy with it, um, especially over here. Just going to add in a little bit of darker green here and on where the feathers are as well. So again, you can really kind of play with this. And where I don't want any harsh lines, I'm just going to use the water, just water, to bring into that colour. So that it will spread like our little feathered bits did up here. So just use the water to bring that out. And again, I'm going to use the water down here for this bit here as well. That bit on the beak. Just so that it feathers it out really nicely. Oop. Just zhuzh that a little bit. Zhuzhing is a technical term, decided. Mine has had Botox in its beak. <laughs> I cannot wait to see these. I can't wait to see them. Can't wait. Um, eyes. So the eye. Now you can either those of you who are who are quite um, experienced watercolor painters um, will probably have used something called masking fluid before. So if you wanted a perfectly white eye that was left there, you can use something called masking fluid. Um, but you have to paint that, let it dry before you put any watercolor paint over the top. Um, for our one here. What I'm going to do is use the um, kitchen towel or toilet paper method. I know toilet paper is in short supply at the moment. Um, where I'm going to add a little bit of water just in a circle. 
and then I'm going to use the tissue paper to dab it off. So I'm going to put this down so hopefully you can see clearly what I'm doing. So again, I'm using my thin small brush and I'm going to just come on here with a little bit of water and I'm just going to agitate it slightly so just keep going round and round just so that it picks up some of that pigment off of the, uh, off the paper. And I'm going to use the kitchen towel to dab away at it. So can you see that it's left that very clear image there? My tail is huge. <laughs> Don't worry, I said I said that you could uh, you can always adjust it. Um, you can make the tails bigger. You can make the uh, the beaks bigger. You can make the legs bigger. I've only got one leg on here. He's standing on one leg today. Um, but feel free to put, put another leg in if you wanted to, coming from the other side. I might add that in, actually. There we go. So I've just dabbed a little bit more there um, and agitated a little bit more with the water. Um, and then I'm going to use, I'll probably use brown, maybe, a bit of dark brown. Um, or you can use black just to get the uh, little pupil of that eye. And giving them an eye, I think, just brings the character to them completely and utterly. So if I hold that up so you can see his little eye there, I've literally just put the tiniest dot in the middle of his eye. Again, if you want to make it bigger, if you want to do it pointing in a different direction to give him a slightly different expression, you can do that. That's not a problem at all. Um, I'm going to go back to our blue and just add a few dots um, at the back of this. I think it's Still, although I think it's still slightly wet, I might let that dry first. Um, so you could you could decorate your bird as well. So you could put a few little dots here and there, um, where it's got kind of different feathers going on, different patterns. Um, I will add that other that other leg. So I'm going to add his other leg in here. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, I have drawn this one. I have painted this one before, um, where he's only had one leg, and that looks just as cute. I think. Um, so I'm just going to take these claws out here and one at the back so they almost go behind the other foot. Just bring that out slightly. There we go. So he's now got two legs. So one looks like it's going behind and the other one, because it's slightly blended into his feathers, looks like it's in front. Um, what else do I need to add? I think that's it. I will add a few spots on him when that dries. Um, again, if you want to go for kind of darker, uh, more vivid colours, do. Um, that's not a problem. <laughs> Tail's really wide and thick. Oh dear, says Lynn. Oh Lynn, what's happened? What's happened to the bird? Um, so, I think that is my finished complete bird. So let me know what yours is like. You can make this bigger, you could add different colours to it. Um, you can make the beak bigger, you could uh, make the eyes bigger in a different direction. You can make him even fatter and rounder, you can make him a little bit skinnier. Um, I do quite like the birds when they look a bit fatter. I think I think they look really nice when they're a bit fatter and bigger and round. Um, cool, so have a go, have a practice. You might even want to try some putting some dots into the wet actually on his feathers. That might actually look really, really nice. I can't wait to see yours. I can't wait to see them. So post them below once you've done them, once you've finished with them. Post them on the, uh, on the thing. Cheryl, mine is a fish with legs. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's not. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Um, do share it. Do comment on other people's as well. Have a look at what others have done. Um, tomorrow we'll need exactly the same stuff. Um, you won't need anything different. So you'll need watercolour paper, paint brushes, um, watercolour pencil, uh, watercolour paints rather. Um, you won't need anything else different. Um, we're going to look at doing uh, a forest tomorrow, but a forest that's kind of disappearing off into the distance. Um, so it's going to, yeah, it's going to look really cool. So we're going to do that tomorrow. Next week, I just wanted to tell you that I've decided next week to do paper craft. Um, so a lot of this is kind of folding paper, um, making different things out of paper and card. Um, yeah, I've got lots of different things planned, so it'll be really exciting. Um, some of the things you just, so you will need paper, 
Um, you will need some kind of card for next week. So if you've got like cereal boxes or any kind of food packaging like that, cereal box kind of thickness would be ideal, um, which is why I'm telling you now so that you've got a chance to collect some um, and don't put it in the uh, recycling just yet. Um, greens at the ready, excellent. Um, and you will also need either a glue stick or double-sided tape. Um, double-sided sticky tape will work quicker and will hold it better, um, but a prick stick will, will work just as well, it's just you might have to wait for it to dry. Um, if anyone needs to order any um, Artway, who I said to get watercolour paints from, um, and the works also, uh, they both do double-sided sticky tape, they both do um, glue sticks, um, and they, if you order them kind of today or tomorrow, they will arrive in time for next week, um, which again is why I'm, why I'm telling you now. So, greens at the ready. Oh, was that for the forest? Greens at the ready for the forest. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, fantastic. Emma's going to get all the kids at school. So Emma's a teacher. She's going to get all the kids at school uh, painting with me. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Um, fantastic. Thank you so, so much for joining. Um, I hope you all have a really good rest of the day and please don't forget to post pictures of your birds. Um, I can't wait to see them. Um, you might even do a few. You could do kind of a, a, a big one in the middle and then smaller ones around the outside, um, which would be awesome to see. Actually, they really will be like the birds out of the twits. Um, have fun. Have a great day. And from me and from Stitch, see you later.